Yes, VDJ Khalifa, all the mixes you are now listening to the mixes of VDJ Khalifa. It's social Friday on Y in the morning, and you're used to entertainment. But today we focus on a source of entertainment that is not really popular with the Kenyan youth, and we're about to understand why. In studio with me is Mukoma Wangugi, who is a novelist, a poet, an activist, and a scholar, an associate professor at Cornell University in New York. Karibu sana. Yeah, Santa. All right, if I missed anything, your camera uh, is four. All right, no, I, I don't think you missed anything. Uh -huh. Yeah. I yeah. said so. Well, let me think. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, you said everything, yeah. Any words that I left out? <laughs> no. All right. No. Uh, <laughs> let's, Sana, yeah, Santa. Uh, to why in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, before we start this conversation, VDJ Khalifa, do you have a microphone? Uh, hmm. yeah, do you read Hopper. VDJ Khalifa? Yeah. You read? Yeah. Which was the last book you read? <laughs> I think Nikiwa <laughs> High School. <laughs> yes, you want to talk about that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, how long have you mm. been in the country? Well, I've been here since um, the last two weeks or so. Alright. Yeah, but before this, I was in Ghana uh, visiting uh, the slave castles, and um, yeah, and because I'm watching, uh, you know, the relationship between Africans and African Americans, I was in Ghana. Have you found anything we have in mm. common ex uh, apart from showing off? Well, yeah, 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 I've been saying this, you know, I guess by, by now people have heard, but uh, Malcolm X was in Kenya uh, in 1964. He came to Kenya, met with Jaramogi, Kenyatta, met with Pio Gama Pinto. What most people, uh, yeah, and also he gave a speech at the Kenyan parliament. But what most people don't know also is that um, it, 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 both Malcolm and Pio Gama Pinto were killed or assassinated within four days of each other. Yeah. Wow, I never knew about that. Yeah, we, so I, we I, have I, a lot of similarities. We yeah, have exactly. Yeah, and I've been saying we should at least have a plaque somewhere saying Malcolm X was here. You know, right. yeah. I appreciate uh, the legend. Mm. Yeah, and also another thing a lot of people don't know is that uh, Thurgood Marshall, who was a Supreme Court in the U.S., a uh, black, uh, black Supreme Court justice. Yeah, he was an advisor to the uh, to the Kenyan Constitution in the early '60s. Right. Yeah. And uh, now we have a constitution that is uh, quite similar to Amer the American constitution as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I was reading somewhere the other day that he actually he's the one who put in the Bill of Rights in uh, in the Kenyan constitution. But I need to read more around that, so so I can't say for sure beyond that. All right. So uh, mm. uh, you are very proud to be black, and you're representing black people mm. as an African, as a black African. Yeah. Well, as a black African, but I've been in the U.S. for over. You know, I went there in 1990. Well, I was born there, so technically you could say I'm African American, though culturally, of course, I'm Kenyan. Yeah, so you could argue that I've been struggling with both identities. Not really struggling with both, but coming to terms with both. So eventually I told myself, well, why can't I be everything, you know? <laughs> Instead As of trying to be one pick thing. The yeah. accent so much. But uh, from the titles of your books, mm. uh, like Nairobi Heat mm. and uh, uh, the other one about Nairobi. Uh, mm. Blackstar Nairobi. Blackstar Nairobi, yeah. exactly. You're, you seem to have a lot of interest in Nairobi. Is this where you mm. grew up after being born in the U.S.? No, no. We are, yeah, so I was born in the U.S. We came back when I was very young. But I grew up in Limuru in Limuru town, so you could argue Nairobi had always been fascinating because for us to come to Nairobi, we had to put on our Sunday best, you know, Vaseline our faces, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, so I guess in that, in that regard, Nairobi was always sort of a mystery, you, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm a village boy, so, so I've always had that fascination. But then, of course, it's also, you know, the place where, you know, decisions are made, um, you know, it's also, you could argue, the cultural capital, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah it's, it's always been a fascinating place, yeah. All right, uh, I can't say, uh your name sells you out. Mm. I can say not so many people uh, don't you know Mokoma? the fun <laughs> fact about you. You're the son uh, to Ngugi Wadiongo. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I was reading somewhere uh, mm. that your, uh, the translation of your book, uh, mm. Nairobi Heat, yeah. in German, uh, yeah. was, uh, was really received well mm. in Germany. And uh, yeah. when your dad got to Germany, mm. it was actually introduced uh, mm. as your dad instead of being introduced uh, yeah. uh, by his name. Uh, mm. So being someone who's not uh, living in the shadow mm. of the daddy, yeah. uh, your dad being a legend in Kenya, a legendary mm. writer in Kenya, uh, how have you managed to do this? Well, I, I think, you know, as a writer, as a writer, you have to believe in yourself, right? You, you know, you have to believe you're better than other writers. So there's a part of me that believes I'm the better writer than my father. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, you, have, you have to have that confidence, otherwise then... You know, but, but there, of course, there's also doubt, you know, yeah, you know, there's uh, somebody who said a writer is uh, half confidence, half doubt. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, but... So that um, is what makes a writer, half uh, confidence, half, half doubt. doubt. Yeah, but, but in Germany, um, so I, I, I joke with him because I tell him, well, I, I have one country, he, he has the rest of the world, you know, so, <laughs> so, so I need to capture more territory from him. 
right. Uh, we were talking about uh, being African earlier, mm. and uh, there's this quote that stands out for me, and it goes something like, as an African and a black person, I feel that I have the duty to love all the places I call home. Love uh, need not always to be pleasant. It can be demanding, defensive, angry, and wrong, but it's all... Uh, but always want to build, not to destroy. Yeah. What were you going through when you wrote this? Well, I or mean, what it, is the experience that? Yeah, I really mean, part inspired? of it was, uh, yeah, d deciding or, or trying to come to terms. Yeah, like I said earlier, trying to come to terms with, uh, you know, being of multiple heritages. You know, so owning, you know, my U.S. heritage and also my Kenyan heritage. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but also, what's the duty? If you, if you if you say you love a place, or actually if you say you love somebody, what duty do you have to them? Okay. You know, and in 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 that quote, I was trying to argue that. Um, that we have a duty to be critical, we have a duty to be political, you know, um, and especially for the youth, I should add, I think the youth have a duty to be revolutionary, right? You know, yeah. In fact, earlier today I was thinking, um, you know, when you think of all the, re the revolutionaries, Che Guevara, uh, Steve Biko, Amilka Cabral, anybody you name, actually, you know, they were revolutionaries in their 20s and 30s, so. Yeah, so, but anyway, if we have a duty, we have a duty to change the society we're in if we love it. I like that. 1982 is a special, uh, mm. is a time that stands out in the history of your family. Uh, yeah. Uh, were you already born in 1982, first, before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I was born in 1971, yeah. All right, so you were yeah. alive and kicking in 1982. Yeah, so I have what? memories of, yeah, 1982, yeah. All right, how was it going through mm. this, and did you even understand mm. what your family was going through? Yeah, I mean, yeah, because, you know, we grew up in a political home, you know, so I have, I actually have even earlier memories of um, when my father was sent into de detention by the Kenyatta government. Mm -hmm. And some of my memories around that are, uh, you know, we try, you know, every now and then we'd, we'd be told we can go visit him. Uh -huh. And then at the last minute, the visit would get cancelled. Uh -huh. But part of it was because, it, you know, they were, the government wanted him to put civilian clothes when, you know, to come and see us. And then, 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 after, then, then after we leave, then he, he was supposed to put back his, his prison clothes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so I have memories of that. 1982, of course, there was the coup, first and foremost, right? So I have memories of the coup. Uh, but then also trying to understand his absence. Um, you know, but we, but we grew up in a political home, so even though I couldn't articulate all the, you know, all the politics behind it, at least I knew he wasn't a criminal. Uh -huh. um, you understood it, what he was doing. I understood what he was doing, yeah, because uh -huh. those, those were the years when, um, you know, when they banned effigies of him and other what they call, quote-unquote, political dissidents. Uh -huh. So every now and then you turn on the TV and you see, you know, like the effigies <laughs> being right. burned, yeah. So, yeah, so, so for us to survive, I think we had to have a, 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 an understanding politically of what was going on, yeah. Yeah. A, a very huge percentage of uh, Kenyans mm. who went through the 844 system uh, must have interacted with one mm. of your dad's books. Yeah. Uh, personally, yep. I interacted with uh, The River Between. Me too, actually. Yeah. All right. yeah, 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 in secondary school, yeah. All right. <laughs> so how was it like? Had you read it before you went to high school? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, 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 I don't think I'd read it before, before I went to school. So, but it was, it was sort of funny then, you know, being expected to know more than I knew. Right. Yeah. You always got to be on the spotlight. Yeah, to that. be on the spotlight. Yeah. There are questions, you know, that I, that I really couldn't answer because I was, I was just a student. <laughs> yeah, then in college also, we studied a grain of wheat uh -huh. uh, in, in, my, in my literature courses. Yeah, so, you know, and, 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 and now I teach him, actually, yeah. and now I teach him. Yeah, uh -huh. but he also teaches Nairobi Heat, so. All right. <laughs> so, so, so we're even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your dad teaches about yeah. you. Yeah. All right, yeah. so Nairobi Heat. Uh, Tell us about Nairobi. Mm. Yeah, so Nairobi, the history behind Nairobi Heat is, um, the, 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 I guess you could argue the seed that, uh -huh. that gave birth to Nairobi Heat. Uh, it's actually a funny story. Mm -hmm. I was coming from a party at this point. I was a UW Madrid, so I, was, I was coming from a party maybe around 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then on the third floor where I lived, I found a white woman who was passed out uh -huh. uh, from too much drinking. It was a party school. That's all we did, really. <laughs> so, you know, so, 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 which uh, school is this? Uh, UW Madison, University, University of Wisconsin Madison. It was also a good school, maybe I should add that. Uh -huh. uh, and so I called the police, uh, the ambulance, and then, you know, the policeman who came uh, with the ambulance was an African American. Uh, so at some point I was standing there with the, with the African American cop and me there as an African and this white woman. And I, was, I just realized I had a novel, you know, there and then it didn't take much. So, uh -huh. yeah, so in Nairobi Heat, you have an African-American detective mm -hmm. uh, investigating the death of a white woman uh -huh. where the suspect is an African. Uh -huh. So with, uh, let me say, if I didn't drink, uh -huh. I wouldn't have gotten that story. <laughs> you wouldn't have gotten inside. <laughs> so something good comes out of everything. Uh, exactly, yeah. All right. Yeah. So I'd like to get to know your activism side. Mm, yeah. Because you describe or you mm. introduce yourself yeah. from time yeah. to time as an yeah. activist. Uh, yeah. 
What What are some of the things you are participating in that make you an activist? Mm, yeah, so I would, it, it, yeah, I'm actually debating that now as I get older, right? You know, whether I, I should keep using that term. Uh, but um, you know, I've been involved with Pan African Pan African movements. Uh, when I was in, uh, in, in at the university, we started an organization called Africa Without Borders. You know, to, to, the whole idea, you know, yeah, that we need a borderless Africa. Uh, but now I say most of my activism really is through writing, through my political columns, uh, you know, and through my literature and teaching and so on and so forth. All right. Uh, so mm. we need a borderless Africa. Uh, recently we yeah. had the mm. honorable, uh, the honorable mm. from South Africa, Julius Malema. Yeah. He actually yeah. recommended that we have Swahili as the African language. Yeah. So do you think language is really the mm. solution uh, to uniting mm. Africa, considering we have Swahili as the national language in Kenya, and but it doesn't united, really yeah. help <laughs> during elections. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a political question. It, it, okay, so certainly you could argue that the more we know our languages, the more we are aware of ourselves, mm -hmm. and the more then we are less, the more you know yourself, the more like, the, the less likely you are, you are to attack somebody else, right? The more confident you are in your own culture, mm -hmm. the less likely you are then to attack somebody else's culture. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with language. But, but it's, it's mostly a political question, right? You know, it, it, so, you know, and at the same time, we don't Kiswahili, which I support through, you know, through my work with the Mabati Cornell Kiswahili Prize. At the same time, we don't Kiswahili to become a colonizing, <laughs> to become a colonizing language. So I think it's a question of reviving and putting resources into all our languages. But certainly, the, the, the question of African unification, it, it's political, and we, we also have to ask ourselves, do we want to unify under a hyper-capitalist, exploitative Africa, right? Yeah. Or do we want to unify in a more in, in the vision of Nkrumah, so a more socialist, egalitarian uh, Africa? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm right to say you're a socialist. You could say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. No. So I, I mean, you know, I, I, I go with Steve Biko, right? Because Steve mm -hmm. Biko was asked whether he's a socialist, right? Uh, this was before he was killed, of course, and he said that um, because of the inequalities, uh, because of the high inequalities in South Africa, whatever solution comes forward has to be socialist in nature, and and, and that's the same thing in Kenya. You can't have uh, one family owning, and this I'm talking about the Kenyatta family, owning 565,000 acres of land. Mm -hmm. you know, and then we try to build democracy on that level of inequality. You, we need land re redistribution. We need redistribution of resources. There's no other way we can build democracy on, in, on, on great inequality. All right. uh, critics will say mm -hmm. sociali soci uh, socialism, yeah. uh, it breeds laziness. Um, no, no, it, it may be for the rich. <laughs> you know, no, no, it doesn't. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it, first, if you consider the amount of work people do anyway, right, whether they're laboring out in the, in, you know, in the shambles and so on and so forth. Yeah, wake up very early, but Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If people, if people by nature want to do fulfilling work. People by nature, you know, want to be productive, you know, so, so the, it, it's, it's something that was used to defeat socialism. In fact, it's actually the Kenyans, uh, t Tom Boy and so on and so forth, when Nkrumah was arguing for a greater, you know, a united Africa under socialism, it's actually the the, um, the Kenyans, you know, Tom Boy and so on and so forth, who argued that Africans are naturally socialist, mm -hmm. right? Which is which is which is actually untrue, right? You know, because otherwise well, we wouldn't have any inequality. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I wouldn't say it breeds laziness. I, I think actually it, it's, it's the other way around. I think people would be more industrious if they were doing fulfilling work that's also making sure they're okay in terms of you for what yeah exactly yeah done. yeah all right yeah. so uh we have a vdj khalifa right here mm -hmm. the last book he read he was in high school i don't know mm -hmm. about the rest <laughs> of the people so uh there's something to say about the reading culture in kenya uh, yeah well yeah. you shouldn't admit that actually <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing yeah all right so we have your book topic chats uh, yeah. i make it sound like an album now topic chats in uh, germany yeah uh, but in kenya we are not talking about it so yeah. much what is the problem and you well, who grew up here, you're you're a reno renowned writer. Now. Yeah, I mean part of it, part of it is uh, the, the publishing industry here. You know, I mean, so okay. First, uh, let me start with the reading culture. People read, right? Uh, generally, people read. If, if you think of the Bible, right? You know, yeah. the Bible. Everybody reads the Bible. And um, at St. Paul's University, where I'm the visiting professor for this month, they have a Bible translation center. Where what people there said was that um, they believe that God speaks to you in your language. Mm -hmm. Right? Otherwise, you can't be chilling somewhere and God comes and speaks to you in Russian, right? I mean, you know, so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Makes yeah, so, so there's that question then of making literature available to, uh, to people in the languages they speak. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the youth, yeah, I mean, they, they, it depends on what you call reading, right? There's this critical Ikide Ikeola from uh, Nigeria who says, well, I mean, they're reading Facebook, you know, they're reading tweets and so on and so forth. So, so, but yeah, yeah, I think it's a question of, of, of and yeah, and, and, and yeah, you can Facebook put a poem, yeah, and reading tweets, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, but we need we need to we need more independent publishing, you know, if if indeed a reading culture is gonna flourish. Right. 
So we have the Mabati uh, mm. Cornell Swahili Prize for African Literature yeah. Award, in which you're a co-founder, right? Yeah. All right, why Swahili? Well, uh, if, uh, because it was uh, the, the way we thought it would be the most symbolic. All right. Right, you know, the most symbolic. Before we talk about uh, the symbolism and everything, in uh, a scale of one to ten, how good is your Swahili? Uh, two. Two. But oh, you still oh, maybe, maybe negative two. <laughs> <laughs> but you still no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, right. a pro, I'm a product. I'm, I'm a, you know I'm I'm not a very proud product. I should say of the uh -huh. Kenyan educational but you system. You can still communicate. In yeah, the streets I, I, of Nairobi. yeah, in the streets of Nairobi, I can communicate. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, but the reason behind it was yeah to have it as a symbolic, uh, you know, symbolic gesture. You know, where we set up the structures for publishing, translation. Mm -hmm. You know, and and, of, and hopefully in the long run we'll be able to do workshops and so on and so forth. Set it up as a as a, as a symbolic structure for other languages then that they could follow. Fine. And and one of the ideas we had was actually to rotate amongst languages, but you know there's only like three of us, so so we need, ideally other people should follow. Example, let's set up you know, prizes for, for other African languages. Uh, so this time around you're hosting it in, uh, in, in Tanzania. Tanzania. In Tanzania, yeah. Uh -huh. So. Yeah, and uh, this time around we have a Kenyan winner, otherwise uh -huh. generally it's been Tanzanians who have been winning. Uh -huh. But that's because, well, the educational system is in Kiswahili, uh -huh. uh, whereas for us we take Kiswahili as a subject, you know. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, this time a Kenyan is winning. So you get yeah. to know who's winning before the, the opportunity. Yeah, yep. All right. That's yeah. how your award uh, works. Yep. It's different from the rest. Yeah, no, no, yeah no, 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 the, the winners have been announced. Uh -huh. They were announced, uh, we announced the winners about two weeks ago. Right, so uh, they're going to be at the event picking the awards. So they'll be at the event picking the awards. Yeah, it's a right. total of... Um, no I surprises. Think, uh, uh, no, there are no surprises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. yeah, no, everything is known. Yeah. I like this. Uh, uh, yeah. So you chose the best day or mm. the worst to yeah. come to this show. It's called Social Friday. Uh -huh. And uh, you look like a serious person. Not Associate really. professor, <laughs> you look like you don't like games, but I'm about to play a game with All you. Right, okay. Since uh, you're a wordsmith, uh, this game is called Tell Me the First Thing That Comes to Your Mind. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you ready? Yeah, all right, okay. All right, so the first word mm. is uh, Nairobi. Nairobi heat. <laughs> uh, not so much fun to eat. Uh, USA. Uh, racism. Uh, seafood. Don't eat it. Calif Calligraph Jones. Who? Calligraph Jones. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> we are sorry. We are sorry. Omolo. Uh, Octopizo. Uh, okay, who is that? Uh -huh, we are sorry, Octopizo as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, English Premier League. I uh, hate it, actually. Yeah. You hate it, actually. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. no, because I, I don't understand the, 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 uh, the obsession we have with... Uh, I guess you could argue we are following the English language and our obsession with mm -hmm. it. But I don't understand why the, the obsession with the, with the English Premier League. Right. I, but I can't, I can't even tell you who is playing. But I did watch the World Cup, though, in my defense. Right. Yeah. So the World Cup, uh, you enjoy football. You just yeah. don't understand the craze with English yeah. Premier League. Yep. Yeah. All right, next one. We've come to the end of this. Thank you but, very much uh, for coming. Yeah. But how did I do in the game? Uh -huh. How did I do in the game? Oh, the game? Yeah. Uh, you did quite well. All right. Uh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> people got entertained. That's all I can say. <laughs> all right. So you need to do your research. Uh, Calligraph uh, Jones uh, and Octopi. Do you All listen right. to hip hop music, by the way? It, well, it, it, mm. like Nas from the, I mean, I'm, I'm the, like Nas. Uh, the Generation X, you know, right. like Nas. It would yeah. be very tough to compare Nas uh. to them, but uh, <laughs> just, just figure out. The, the, the flying yeah. Kenyan flag is yeah. uh, so high uh, when it comes to music, mm. uh, and I really like the guys. So oh, you okay, can I'll check, check, them them out. check yeah. out their music. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I'm I pretty sure you know Sautiso. <laughs> Everybody knows Sautiso. Well, uh, okay, may, okay. I'll, I'll just say I do. <laughs> In the same way, you shouldn't admit, you know. <laughs> I won't admit I don't. Yeah. I like this. So I have four of your books right here. Uh, we have the Hurling of Words at uh, Consciousness. Mm. This. Uh, it's a poetry book, yeah. Yeah, it's a poetry. Yeah, it, it came out in it's uh, 2007. It's 2007, books, yeah. right yeah. there. It's not online. This it's one. not online. All right. Yeah. So we have the Mrs. Show, uh, a novel by Mukoma Wangugi, right yeah. here. This one is online. That's online. Yeah. Amazon. Yeah. They can find it. Yep. All right. So we have uh, uh, Killing Sahara, Mukoma Wangugi. This yeah. one as well. Yeah, that's Killing. online. But that's uh, that's also Black Star Nairobi. It's, right. It just has a, has, a, has a different title in South Africa. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, why? Mm. Why this way, maybe? Well, because uh, that, that uh, that's the title that, uh, that for me worked. You know, uh -huh. the Americans wanted Blackstone and Nairobi. Uh -huh. But the publishers in South Africa agreed with me. Because Killing Sahara, I mean, don't you want to read it? The title is catchy. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, so it's online as well. It's online as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have the rise of the African novel, Politics of Language, Identity, mm -hmm. Identity and Ownership. 
this yeah, one that, is online. Okay. That's online as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that came out in March last year. It's <laughs> my latest book. Yeah, but that's looking at the literary history of. Uh, yeah, you could argue that's my more serious side, actually. This <laughs> is your more serious side. Uh, yeah. There's this line, uh, politics of language. Mm -hmm. Can you make me understand what this is? Yeah, it, 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 I'm, I'm, in the book, I really, I'm just trying to understand why we privilege, uh -huh. right, the English, uh, the, the, the African novel that's written in English. Uh -huh. You know, so and then the politics around that, like why, yeah, why, you know, why we sit in here speaking English as opposed uh -huh. to less like Kiswahili, right? Uh -huh. You know, so so it's, it's, it's trying to understand, yeah, how we got trapped, if you will. Into an English metaphysical brother. empire, yeah. I'm challenged, my brother. It seems <laughs> when you are all alone sitting somewhere, you ask yourself a lot of questions, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. yeah, I mean, yeah, don't you? Mukoma or Googie on Y in the morning. You can find his books uh, on yeah. Amazon. Yep. All right, and then you can share with them your social media handles, your camera. Yeah, sure. And, and also Nairobi Hit is, is available here in, in, right. in Nairobi bookstores. Mukomawagoge.com, uh -huh. uh, that's www.mukomawagoge. Uh -huh. com, that's my website. Uh, Twitter, it's uh, at Mokamawagoge. Uh -huh. Facebook, Mokamawagoge. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, just Google Mokamawagoge, so I guess. So I tried yeah. in the introduction with the pronunciation of Ngoge. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, no, you did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did well. Yeah, you right. did. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for coming to Y in the morning. We appreciate yeah. you so no, much. No, no, thank you for having me as well. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yes, we'll have a sidebar right after this. All right. Uh, there's a lot mm. we need to talk about. Sounds like a plan. Right. Yep. Uh, sounds like a plan. <laughs> yep. All right, VDJ <laughs> Khalifa is about to take it away as we wait for uh, Hilda Wathithi and Kalami because They have a lot of great stuff lined up for you on Social Friday. Don't forget the hashtag Social Friday. I go by the name of Barry Moses or It's Barry Moore on every social media platform.